why mm. because in like consider that you, uh, you can it's impossible to go to a vc and you pitch them your idea and you convince them so much with your idea that they tell you look i'm going to liquidate all my investments and i'm going to put everything in you like all the 10 billion dollars portfolio whatever they would <laughs> never do it no matter how bullish they are why because they understand mm. that it's almost impossible to predict what will succeed and what will fail no they might have mm. um you know some uh, gut feel or some inclination that this has more potential than that, but still they under, understand and respect the role of chance and randomness. Many of them know that some of their biggest payoffs came from things that probably they didn't even anticipate to be as successful, and some of their biggest failures came from things that were they were bullish in. And I think I'm trying to mm. promote the same idea for people like me who are trying to do things with much less ambitious ambition than a VC, right? Um, for my own products and my own services that I'm launching, right? It's that um, I don't want to fool myself that I can choose and I can predict what's going to work or not. I'm just I'm just going to be creating a, a few different products, small products, right, that I can launch on my own and take a portfolio approach, just like a VC. And by the way, not just VCs, right? just mm -hmm. like book publishers, movie studios. These are all operators that live in the very randomness laden world where it's very hard to predict what will work and what won't. And what do these operators do? Mm -hmm. Like book publishers and movie studios, they publish many books, right? They publish mm -hmm. many movies. VCs invest in many startups, right? Um, and Mm. I think it can be applied also to the individual. That right? if you want to take the plunge into the business world, into the product world in particular, you know, because there are kinds of businesses where this doesn't apply. Like, you know, if you're doing consulting or freelancing, it could still be a business activity. But that's more of more similar mm. to employment, more predictable. If you're launching a product, I think mm. it's it's uh, it's a different world, right? And I think the mm. most prudent approach is to not folk dedicate everything go all in on one thing right uh, because that would be like a vc going in on one thing right it's sort of nobody does that mm -hmm. right it's it's um it's imprudent from a risk taking perspective uh where, where mm -hmm. i think a better way is like a portfolio right? basically uh have of course unlike a vc i can't start a thousand businesses but i might have five mm -hmm. things running at the same time right five small mm. things that I, I have to be, I have to trade off upside and ambition for smaller things that are more likely to work, right? So when I'm selecting what to work on and what to avoid, um, uh, I don't go for things that might have huge upsides, right? Uh, because I probably can't do them in a short amount of time. Right? I have to pick things that are small that mm. I can do on my, on my own. And the trade off for these things is that their upside is limited. Maybe they, they're not scalable. But it's fine. I'd rather take these small wins, collect these low hanging fruit, build small wins that maybe mm. I can build on in the future as well, rather than le sort of be in this highly unpredictable limbo that right, where I'm, I'm always, mm. I don't know what's going to work, right? And sort of I'm always just hoping for an exit or hoping for something. Mm. 